Hi, Keith Van Wimmer, Van Tech Consulting. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to, uh, to Van Tech Consulting YouTube channel, if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. Your support is very welcome and uh, we do appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, we ask that you possibly consider subscribing to the channel. Help us out and uh, show your support. We did a video on resistive fault locate and there's one more test that we can do along the lines of a resistive fault locate when you have a copper pair that has a fault on both tip and ring. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna go into our multimeter and figure out what exactly if we have a good pair or if not. We always start with our voltage. If we have no voltage, we can move on. So this is good. So we'll move on to the ohms measurement. So tip and ring has a 1.05 mega ohm on it, tip ground, a 2.6 kilo ohm fault on it, and then ring ground back with the 1.05 mega ohm. This pair is basically hosed. We would never be able to use this for VDSL, or is it possible to recover this pair? Now we could go in and we... Okay, so when we got into the editing of the video, I realized that we didn't explain the rules of doing a K-test. So we had to pump the brakes and go back to the basics and talk about the rules of a K-test, when and where to use it. So a K-test is a very specific test and it's used to find approximate distance defaults when the same pair of wires and both conductors are faulted. We can locate the fault and use K-test if there is no known good reference pair. So if you do have a good reference pair or you have a reference conductor, in other words, half of another pair or a separate uh, wire that you can run down to another pedestal, then you can use a single or separate pair RFL. We only use a K-test when you cannot use a single or separate RFL. The faults must occur, and this is very typical, at the same physical point on the pair. So you can't have one fault at 100 feet and the other one at 1,000 feet. It's not going to work. They have to be faulted to the same reference. In other words, tip ground, ring ground. You can't have tip ground and uh, ring going off to another pair with foreign voltage on it. So the fault ratio of the conductors has to be two to one. The fault size on one wire versus the fault on the other, again, they have to be, um, there has to be separation there. So it has to be a two to one. For example, a 10K ohm fault on the tip, then you need to have a 20K ohm fault on the ring. The larger fault value of those two should be at least 100 times greater than the loop ohms of the pair under test. So for example, if the loop ohms is 100, then the larger fault value should be at least 10K ohms. So 100 times greater than the 100 ohms, 10K. In our example, in our video, we're using a test box, the 1155 FLS, so it's 1977 feet of cable. That 1977 is the tip side and the ring side, that makes up our loop. So it gives us a total loop of 3,954 feet. So we know that 24 gauge is approximately 38 feet per ohm, but for math simplicity, we'll go with 38. So when you look at this and we have 3,954 feet, you divide that by 38 foot per ohms, we come up with 104.05 ohms. That's our loop ohms, right? Our loop resistance. So our minimum fault of the, the larger fault, minimum size has to be at least 10.4K ohms. All right, so again, pay attention to these. If you, if you don't and you go outside of these rules, the test isn't gonna work correctly and then you're gonna get frustrated with it and then you'll never use it. And it is a good, valuable test to use. So let's get back to the, uh, to the video try something and let's go ahead and um, and look at it just real quick. We can try and see where the problem is. If we go to TDR, um, it's possible that we may be able to see a, a fault. So we've got this on the smart TDR. We can see the end of our cable, which is right here at, at uh, 1900 and change. And uh, I don't see any other issues anywhere in here. So unfortunately, these faults are too high to be seen. They're not, uh, in telephone terms, not hard enough, short to be seen. So the only choice we have 
since we don't have any good conductor, it's 1900 feet, we could stretch out a wire down there and do a resistive fault locate on one, on one conductor. But most of your meters have this function here, which is called K-test. And the K-test is specifically designed to detect this type of fault. So we have a tip to ground, ring to ground fault, resistive fault. So you put the tip side on the tip, the ring side on the ring, and then the ground, which is the common denominator here, that gets the green. So we don't have to change any leads on this side. The first step is a two-step test. And the first step is done with an open end. So you can see that my my this, these are my faults here on my uh, on my shield or my ground, and we're open on our tip to ring. So let's go ahead and hit start. Again, you always want to make sure that you set this to be the correct gauge of wire, as well as as close to the actual wire temperature that you can get it, um, because again, that does influence, and this is a resistive type of test. So. It's going to run through, it's going to do its resistive fault locate K test and go through and do its wonderful calculations and measurements and you'll hear the relays going. Um, and now it's telling me the second part of the K test, connect a strap to the far end and click OK. And it's showing me a picture here that's showing me a strap from the tip side to the ring. So we're going to go tip to ring and put a strap on there manually. And this can be anything, a piece of jumper wire and a couple beans or whatever. All right, so now we've got that. We're going to go ahead and say go. It's showing me distance to strap up here at the top, DTS, uh, distance to fault. Um, that's a DTF and distance strap to fault. It's showing me that we have a 2.6K ohm tip to ground as well as a 1.6 mega ohm uh, ring to ground. So again, as this goes through and does its calculations and figures out all this wonderful fun stuff, which is just absolute magic to me, it will come back and give us some numbers and tell us where we need to go to locate this issue and go fix our pair. Okay, so the test is finished. The distance of our our uh, distance to strap is 1,963 feet, all right? So that is in line with our 1920, again, temperature and gauge, and this is cat five. So that is 1963 to this end. From the strap to the fault is 1,424 feet, and from the near end where the meter's connected, it's 539 feet to the fault. And something got pinched in a pedestal, in a, in a cabinet, something, you know, and, and causing this or bad insulation, bad mod, something along those lines. So again, this gives us our location. It tells us exactly where it's at. We roll down there 539 feet from where we're at, couple peds down, a couple terminals, go fix it. And bada bing, bada boom, we're done. We've got, uh, we've recovered our pair. So anyway, don't be afraid to use this. Um, when I first got introduced to the K-Test, it was a little frustrating to, to kind of work through this. It does have to be, um, it, you can't use it on a short. You can't use it if you have a 400 meg uh, ground fault to, you know, from tip and a 500 meg ground fault from ring, it's not going to work. It's just going to keep frustrating you and going, nope, that didn't work. Nope, that didn't work. So if you have anything under 20 meg that is a tip to ground and a ring to ground is 19 or 18 meg, then you should be able to use this. Don't be afraid to try it. It's a valuable tool. If you can get it to work, it's going to help you out and save you a bunch of time and help you go recover that pair. So again, I hope this video was helpful. Um, I hope we've added a new tool to your, uh, to your testing arsenal, so to speak. If you have not subscribed, we would appreciate you considering that. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. Don't forget to click the bell uh, so you get notified of our new videos. We're trying to get some of these out a little, um, a little more on schedule than uh, in the past. If you have any requests or need to um, some information on any of the testing or uh, would like to see videos, future videos on any kind of fiber optic or copper testing, uh, anything like that, feel free to drop us a comment, let us know. Be safe, and until next time, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.